Okay, so the last time we looked at a circle where we were given a point on the circle, on the edge of the circle, as well as the center of the circle, and we were able to work out the radius. Now we're going to look at a question where we're given the radius, the center, and we're given a point, but we're not given the full point. We're only given one of the values. And then we're going to actually work out the missing x. If I look at what I've been given here, I've been given the center of the circle, three and one. I've been given the radius is five and then six here, but I am not given this X. So X, the yellow is what I need to find out because I have A and B, which are the center of the circle. And I have the radius, which I'm given. And I am also given one of the, one of the parts of the, uh, point on the circle, which is the y value. Okay, so all I do is now substitute into this equation for my circle. So the first value is the x, right? So that's the unknown. So I'm going to say x, because I don't know that, minus, now the a is the x part of the center of the circle. So that's the 3 squared plus, and then my y is the one, okay? Because that's the, oh no, no. My y is this y, six. Because that's the x, y as a point on the circle. My b is the y part of the center. So, so that's minus one squared equals, and then R, I was told the radius is five, five squared. And now all I do is I times out and solve for X. Remember, oh, this here was six, oops. I was given my Y as six, so I put in a value. So we're given everything except the yellow, which is the X. Okay, so it's times us out, so x minus 3 times x minus 3, we get x squared minus 3x minus 3x is minus 6x. 3 times 3 minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. 6 minus 1 is 5. 5 squared is 25. Equals 25. And so I now have x squared minus 6x. The 25s cancel and I get uh, 9. And so I get 25, uh, 0. And so I actually end up getting 3 and 3. And so my answer then is x equals 3. So I know the x value is 3. So it's actually technically up here. So my point was 3 and 6. So this value here is actually 3 and 6. So we've just drawn, I just did this so that we would have values that would work. But Often what you're going to get when you times this out is two answers. So say it was a point on the circle that I've drawn. So obviously this is not technically a six to scale here. This, this point here is probably more like five. And so what we could do is if we go across here, why is five over here as well? And so we would also get a second value for x here. Yeah. So we would get two x's. So let's actually do that. So let's find out what our answer would be if our point was, if our y value was six and we had to work out, sorry, our y value was five and we had to work this out. So we're wanting x. Now x, we should get two answers. So let's say if we wanted this one, we're going to get take the biggest value for x. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it a bit quicker. So again, the center of the circle hasn't changed. 
my x, I'm still something I'm looking for. The y now is not six, but five. It's five squared. And so I get x squared, again, minus six x plus nine equals five minus one is four. So that'll be plus 16 equals five squared, which is 25. And I get x squared minus six x and then nine plus 16 is 25. And then when I take the 25 across, I get minus 25. So I actually end up with just this zero. So I take out the x and I get an x minus six. And so my answers are x equals zero and x equals six, which works out quite nicely. So this value here would be my six. And of course, yeah, it's actually worked out very nicely because on the point here, that would then be x would be zero there because of the. So um, <clears throat> that's a couple of examples for uh, circular functions. And that should be good.